Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Brian's farm. What <laughs> 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 are you looking at? I don't know how I don't know you're not there. I just love these colors because I'm looking. Okay, that's another blue. Did I you wonder what color that one was. Did you water it had to be watered? Or no. No. Well, actually these were kind of heavy yesterday. Some of them are a little bit. So you got these right here and then I guess those back in there. I didn't want to fertilize these. I did do these. If you don't know, in my previous video we started this kind of fertilizing experiment and we are working with this uh, Super Bell. Calabacopa, and every year we have a little bit of trouble. These just don't want to grow quite like the other ones do. So we're thinking it's kind of a fertilizing issue. So what I did was yesterday, I marked them with their date and what we fertilized them with. We have a 17-4, 100 parts. We have a 17-4, where is that at? 200 parts, right here. We have a 15, 16, 17, 125 parts, and a 15, 16, 17, 200 parts. And so with fertilizing each one of these differently, we're gonna hopefully get to find out what they like more than others. The whole point of doing this is because, as you can see, they're just little tiny poof balls and they're pushing blossoms, which is what we don't want. We want them to get much, much bigger before they start doing that. So I'm gonna start off here with watering some of these begonias. I can't wait till these things are big enough to take out of the seed room. We get into the big house. We're going on, what's today? The 10th of March, and we seeded these on the 8th of February. And so obviously these have been in here the longest and will probably be in here for at least another week or two. Some of them have grown to a nice length that are almost ready to take out, and then others are just so small yet that you can barely even see them if you had a magnifying glass. Sammy and Pap, and with the help of me and my mom and some other family members here and there, have really been going to town. Number two is filling up extremely fast. And I would say, not today, because we're probably not gonna uh, transplant, but tomorrow, we're gonna have to move the rest of our supplies out of here because we're gonna need this room to fill it up. And then at that point, we're gonna kind of be at max capacity for a little bit until we can get our hanging baskets hung up on top of the greenhouse and then hopefully in the next couple weeks it's going to start warming up and then we can get our heuchera and daisies outside that'll leave some room for us because we have two main greenhouses but the one obviously has our seed room in it so that takes up room and then we have a third one out at our market which we sell all of our plants retail but we don't really like to open that one up until it comes time because that just means we have to spend more time out there watering when it's nicer to have it right here. We can just walk back and forth. Right now, things aren't where they're really supposed to be. We kind of just have them placed everywhere because that's where we had room at the time. To start off here, we have the chives and onions. That's where these will actually stay. We have zinnias here on the floor. We have calabacopa here. And then we move into the lupines. Down here on the floor, we have the planters. Over here, we have the mints, which Anything potted mostly is gonna move over into number one here in a couple weeks. So that's the stuff and this stuff here. Then we have the dahlias right here. On this next table here, we have gazinias and more zinnias. We have, da uh, not dahlias, these are dianthus and then rosemary. On the other side here, we have the spikes. More planters here. And now that this stuff is fertilized, it's gonna really start taking off. On the other side here, we have portulacas, more vinca, slosha, more lupines. Here's a prince cut. These will get like two, three foot high. And then here's our daisies and the different kinds of heuchera. We grow a pretty large variety for the greenhouses that we have. Basically, we are at max capacity. We can't grow any more than what we already do. 
Every year we say we're gonna, you know, try and get rid of some of the varieties that we don't sell quite as good. And, you know, maybe just get a little bit smaller. That way we have more room and it's a little more easier to manage, but we never end up doing that. So this year is gonna be just the same again. And we have cut back, we have narrowed down some of our varieties that don't sell as good, but still, then we end up getting new stuff or planting more of the stuff that sells even better. In number one, we have starting on the left hand side, verbena. All different colors, we have a purple, we have a pink. Uh, I think we got a new color this year. We used to see it red, but like I said, that was one of the varieties or colors that didn't sell quite as good, so we did away with it. After mom fertilized, you can already see the new growth. Anything that's light like that, shooting out, is what's new. And that's just from last night, from when she fertilized. On the right side here, we have hanging baskets. This is a lot of the Calabacopa. All different mixtures. We have the yellow and white. We have that pink and white. We have like a dark red, orange. This is like a pinkish with yellow in it, purple. It'll be way, way nicer in a couple weeks. Here's uh, Bacopa. Then we move up here into the fuchsia hanging baskets. On the left hand side here, we have the lantana, which I told you before about the butterflies and hummingbirds liking that. We have rosemary right here, very big seller. Then we move into the petunia hanging baskets. Here's, this is the one we've grown now for like two or three years. Kind of like the, it's called like night sky or something. And it's pretty accurate with like that purplish and the whitish that looks like stars. Over here we have the Vinca vine and more Calabacopa. In the four and a half inch pots, we have some more petunias. What happens is when my mom's making her hanging baskets, that's like the first thing she does here in the greenhouses or one of the first things. And then when she's done making her baskets with whatever variety she wants to put in them, she has extra and then we'll put them in four and a half inch pots. Seed geraniums that we just transplanted not too long ago, more rosemary. Off on this side here, we have coleus, two different kinds. And then over here we have a celosia. I think this is new this year. I don't remember having that last year. I think it's gonna be like a taller plant. We have lemon thyme. Everybody asks, which I should have maybe made it more of a point to get it this year for lemongrass. I don't know how hard it is to grow. I don't know anything about it but I know it is very popular. We move down here into the begonias. Here we have creeping thyme. We have lobelia here on this side. Here is our scent of geraniums. Now this is different this year. We have our old style, what we usually grow, and then this is a different one this year. Over here we have the blushing lilac impatience. And then we get into our bigger hanging baskets, moss hanging baskets, more of the impatience. Here we have the sweet potato vine, we have the green, and then right down here, we have the purple or blackish, whatever you wanna say. The nonstop mocha mix tuberous begonias. And I showed these a couple days ago. The blossoms are really coming out now. More Creeping Jenny, and like I said, we have stuff everywhere just because we didn't have room for it. Here is the Bacopa. Here is Martha Washington's. More of the scented geraniums. This is a new one we got last year. I actually don't even know the name of it. I don't even know how to pronounce that. Euphorbia. Grasses on the left hand side here. We have a purple fountain grass. We have a fireworks and then we have the prince tut which you've seen in the other one. On the right hand side here we have the Gerber daisies. And then we move into our seed geraniums and that goes from here all the way down to the heater down there. All different colors, red, white, uh, pink, and like a purple, all different shades. On the left hand side here is our onions. Anything in a flat like this, it's called a 1201. There's 12 packs of just singles. 
They're all our retail onions. And then we get into our field onions right here, which is the second row here all the way down. And then all these right here. And then we have double this over in the other greenhouse, which I already showed you. A couple more planters. I guess we just tucked right here because we didn't have room. And then we get into our seedlings, which is, this is our new batch of sunflowers right here. We have tomatoes. Right here is actually our high tunnel tomatoes that's gonna be going in hopefully here in a couple weeks. Tomatoes grow very fast. We have some fennel we didn't get to transplant yet. Here's some adradums. Uh, here is actually our second planting of the senadraniums. Salvia, didn't get planted yet. Parsley, platycodon or balloon flowers. Peppermint, Thai basil, Carolina reapers, more pansies, King Arthur peppers, yellow bell, red knight, some silver dust or dusty millers. Echinacea, which is the cone flower, and some lavender. And if you didn't notice, I just got this new speaker made by DJI, which is the same company that makes my drone. Really excited about it. I think it's gonna make my recording a lot easier. And I'll try and show you here. Put my camera down. Inside my shirt is this little dooflinky. You see it says DJI right there. DJI, sorry. And this is what I talk into. And so basically, I can be right here talking to you or I can go almost, I wanna say like 500 feet, I'm pretty sure it is. 300 or 500 feet, I can go away and still talk to you. I'm not quite sure why I would ever need to do that, but if I need to do it, I've got it. And so hopefully with this new recording system, I can, talk a lot easier and you'll be able to hear me more clearly around all these fans and all this noise that's always going on. I'm hoping it helps. I don't really know. I guess we'll find out and see. The other cool thing about it is, and it's not like I'm getting a sponsorship for anything about this, so don't, don't think that's where I'm going. It gave me this magnet. I can clip it on my shirt if I wanted to, just like that. I don't really like that. It gave me this magnet, so what I can do is I can stick this on the inside of my shirt and then I put the magnet on the outside here, and boom, now, if I have it sitting correctly, you can barely see it, and the only thing is I have this little magnet right there. That's all it is. So, if you see this little thing hanging off me, you see a little bump in my shirt, that's what's going on. But so far, I like it. Mom missed some plants yesterday fertilizing, so I am going to finish fertilizing them for her. The only annoying thing is that now we have to run fertilizer through all this line for not that many pots, but it's enough to make it worth running it through, I guess. So here we go. I'm gonna run it in this bucket so you can see the water change colors after the fertilizer hits the line. Oh yeah, there it's going blue. Okay, there we go. So now you can see the fertilizers through the line and I can now start fertilizing properly. Sometimes when I mix varieties, we'll have one that comes on before the other so we just won't plant that one as you can see here, here, and here. And so what I'm gonna do now is another experiment just because I don't have that much going on today and I'm kind of bored. I'm gonna take this 15, 16, 17 at 200 parts, which is so much more fertilizer than what these little tiny seedlings should have and I'm gonna just give it to a couple here that we already planted that doesn't matter about. And you'll see probably even by tomorrow or the next day, by the next time I probably put a video out, you're gonna see how crazy these things go compared to these ones here. I accidentally think I just got like eight of the salvia plants. We're gonna see what happens. I'm also gonna do the same thing to this row right here. Make sure they get a good drink. Okay. So we have experiment number one, which is right here. And we have experiment number two, which is now right here and right here, which is the Impatient Extreme Pink and the Impatient Premium, actually no, the Impatient Premium White. 
all the bigger pots and hanging baskets in here were fertilized with a 15, 16, 17 at 200 parts. And just like the verbena, you can see all this new light green growth that's coming out, which is exactly what we wanted. So we were thinking about doing like a 17, 4, 17 mixture at 200 parts, but we realized, okay, now these need to grow. We don't just want to be pushing blossoms. I think we're going to be really happy with what we went with because I'm already noticing a difference even a day later.